Hello friends. Stroke is the leading cause of disability and fifth leading cause of death. 80 to 90 percent of strokes are ischemic. Ischemic stroke is a medical emergency and is characterized by sudden loss of blood circulation to an area of the brain, resulting in a corresponding loss of neurologic function. To discuss the various treatment modality and importance of time in ischemic stroke, I, Dr. Bharat Jagyasi, have Professor Prasanna Bedkar with me. Dr. Prasanna Bedkar is a professor and in charge of neuroanesthesia, Jipno Hospital, Pondicherry. Dr. Prasanna, welcome to ICCM Podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Bharat. Thank you for having me here. And I am really delighted to join you on this discussion of stroke. So, Dr. Bedkar, we straight away go to the first question. Why is it being called as a medical emergency and what are the timelines related to ischemic stroke? Oh, that's a very nice question, Bharat. When we look at this, uh, all the neurological emergencies which come to our hospital, two are the most time-sensitive dependent emergencies are one is extradural hematoma and the other one is acute ischemic stroke. The earlier we diagnose this condition and put a permanent treatment to this, the outcomes, particularly neurological outcomes are better. Of that, the one of the important neurological emergency per se is acute ischemic stroke, which is very time sensitive. It depends on the onset of symptoms of the patient, when we get the patient, how early we diagnose it, do a radiological investigation and treat the patient as early as possible. The earlier we treat, chances of complications are less and also the outcome in terms of neurological outcome, in terms of disability, death or discharge to home are much better when we treat these emergencies early. Hence, each hospital needs to have a strict stroke protocol, also need to have a stroke team which is readily available so that these emergencies can be diagnosed readily and treated as early as possible. So, sir, as you said, it's time sensitive. So, what are the treatment modalities available in this? I mean, what is the time frame for the various treatment modalities? Yeah, that is also again one of the most important questions what uh, always it is asked in terms of stroke. Basically, there are two time uh, sensitive modalities are there in this treatment. One is when did the patient last found normal or what is the onset of the symptom of the stroke and when he comes to the hospital, how fast treatment is administered. So, in terms of this, if the patient presents to you from the onset of symptoms less than four and a half hours to the hospital, so he is a candidate for IV thrombolytic therapy. So, we need to assess two or three things before we go for IV thrombolytic therapy. One, whether the patient ABC are proper, airway breathing circulation are proper and the two, whether there are any contraindications for IV thrombolytic therapy. For example, patient may have an intracranial bleed. In the past, he might have undergone a major surgery in the last three months. He might have got a GI malignancy, intracranial malignancy or any bleeding disorder. Also, in the CT scan in the radiology, we need to make sure that there is no bleeding, there is no hyperdensity in the CT scan. Also, whether there are any established hypodensities which points towards the irreversible damage to the brain. If these are not there and if we are able to control the BP for less than 185 to 110 millimeters of mercury, these are the candidates for IV thrombolytic therapy. Currently, the recommended drug is the Alteplase, 0.9 milligram per kg, maximum dose of 90 milligram. There was another drug trial of Tenectoplase which was going on to compare with Alteplase. The results are out two days back and it was found that with the Tenectoplase, the complication rates are higher. Hence, the Alteplase stands the case that it has to be used. And suppose the patient has come after 4.5 hours or we do not know when the patient last well. well. So, these are the candidates and in cases of large artery occlusions or posterior circulation stroke, endovascular therapy remains the mainstay of the treatment. The inclusion and the exclusion criteria mainly depend on the basis of the diffuse and down three, uh, diffuse three and down trial criteria. Based on the inclusion criteria, if the patients are having a higher NIHSS score and a good aspect score where there is a mismatch between the clinical and the aspect score, these patients have to be considered for endovascular therapy, which remains the mechanical thrombectomy is the main form of therapy in this group of patients. Does it mean that do we have to stop the intravascular or intravenous therapy of alteplase? Intravenous alteplase therapy can always be used as a bridging therapy when the patient is getting ready for mechanical thrombectomy. That means the treatment should not be denied or delayed waiting for the mechanical thrombectomy. The meantime, as soon as in the CT scan you find that this patient can go for a mechanical thrombectomy, alteplase has to be started 
because it has several advantages that it can help in crisis of the thrombus also in the places where the catheters microvascular catheters cannot reach the arteries can reach and help in the thrombus crisis so it has to be used as a bridging therapy so sir to be precise when we go for the combination therapy so arteries need yeah. to be used only when the patient is presented in 4.5 hours or beyond that as well uh, beyond 4.5 hours actually it has been found that it is not very effective and it also increases the risk of complication in certain cases like where there is a mri mismatch in the sense that in a normal mri image you find a diffusion deficit that means there is a ischemic deficit is found but in the flare images there are no hyper intensivities to prove that it is going for the infarct in such cases it can be used up to 6 hours however the chances of success are very less and it is still under investigation thank you sir and very nicely explained sir do we have any other modality beyond this is there any something recently coming up with yeah there are two or three modalities and largely the other modalities apart from iv thrombolysis and endovascular therapy most of the other investigational modalities are considered investigational still in the treatment of acute systemic stroke so notably one of the most important is whether you combine intra arterial and intra vascular alter place it is still under investigation there is no concrete proof on that and also sonothrombolysis you can use a transcranial doppler or transcranial color duplex coded sonography to continuously so anyhow in these patients will be monitoring pcd for revascularization so it has been found that with the high intensity ultrasound beam targeted at the clot it can help in the dislodgement of the clot similarly intra arterially also high intensity ultrasound beams are being tried for the clot resolution on thrombolyzed cases which are still investigational therapies as of now it is again arteries and the mechanical thrombectomy which stand the test of the time uh, thank you sir thanks for being with us so would you like to have any closing comments on this yeah so there is one more thing being a neuro anesthetist i am always asked this question that whether these patients with stroke when they are going for mechanical thrombectomy whether it is safe to do under general anesthesia or is it safe to do under only monitored anesthesia care that is under sedation it is a common perceived notion is that those patients which undergo these treatments under general anesthesia they fare far worse in the neurological outcome as compared to the monitored anesthesia care but in the recent studies it has been proved beyond that that general anesthesia patients are outcomes are equally good because general if the patient is uncooperative or patient is drowsy it is always better to do under general anesthesia it also helps in control of bp as well as to add the cerebral protective measures so hence those patients who need general anesthesia can be given general anesthesia safely in patients with acute ischemic stroke i think i have made my point clear bharat Yes I mean thank you very much for lighting us on this and it was really nice having you on the ICCM so this is for the day friends keep listening we'll be back again very soon thank you